Welcome to Sailing Ruby Rose. It is the 4th of May, Star Wars Day. So, may the force be with you. This is Ruby Rose 2, and with six weeks left to run, the electronics are finished, carpentry is ready to be finished, and the Corian's going in next week. Lots to show you, keep watching. So welcome on board Ruby Rose 2. For those of you who want to see an update, this is where we are. A couple of things you need to understand. This boat is different, Ruby Rose 2. First, solar. These are uh, MC5 connectors. In fact, that's the uh, scene in 7 where he's got all the air freshness. So basically, the solar array is going onto this boat and this is the first time that you're actually going to see the solar because boat number one doesn't have. So all these panels being affixed to the deck and those MC5 connectors going through. So we have a lot of solar. So this is the first time you're gonna kind of see where that array is. Let me get up onto the deck. Okay, up here. So it gives you a good idea of where these solar panels are gonna be. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A lot of solar. So these are our solar panels, 1980 watts of solar. Now this is on a 24 volt system and we will revert back with a full breakdown. I'm gonna have a good chat with James about that, but essentially these are all flexible panels, all flexed and bonded to our deck so we can walk on them. There is no tripping hazard. So essentially the calculations that we've done so far indicate that we will be able to power our entire boat at anchor using these panels alone now this is based on the life that we've had before which essentially is living in the tropics so we are looking at about four to five hours of unbroken sunshine a day so solar array going in finally now these will obviously be bonded to the deck that's that done so yeah looking at power management i said there's an episode coming up discussing the power management completely but it's good to see this and then obviously we've got those big master vault alternators and this boat is due for launch in five weeks. So the electronics team are here. And then after that, we have the carpentry team need to finish off. That is hole number one, Supernatural. They are just doing those mods to the boat. Uh, as I said, from the discussion we have with James, there are many and they are modifying all the boats. But yeah, let's take a look into Ruby Rose 2. Now let's take a quick look around the saloon and inside Ruby Rose 2. Now it actually looks as if not a lot of work has been done here, but I can absolutely promise you when all this blue comes off as they did with Supernatural with hole one, everything kind of like there's a big reveal. The galley work surfaces, they have gone away to the Corian people to be cut. So they will be fitted soon. And a lot of the cabinetry, a lot of the drawers have already been made and are waiting to be fitted. They are in a different part of the factory. So these will all be slid in at the last minute. We do, of course, have that dual uh, propane and induction hob top we have got that lovely electric combination i think it's a it's a microwave and a conventional oven so one thing i did want to talk to you about is just these minor changes that um, we put forward after the test up this shelving unit actually now has the depth for books which is exactly what we wanted it was too shallow i need to keep my books my cruising guides and things like that here so by changing this just a simple pickup during the test sale, now we've got the book storage that we need. Now it is important, and I keep reiterating this, and I'm sorry if this is boring to you lot, but this boat is going to be sensitive to weight. It is going to be sensitive to exactly how much you load it. And the temptation is, and we've got this from experience, this will be our fourth boat. We will be finding it very easy to overload this. So look, the amount of storage here, these are what, 15, 16 inches deep? We have one, two, three, one, two, three, four, six there, a big hanging wardrobe there, two shelves down there, a bookcase there. Moving forward, this desk unit. So this is literally a workstation. Workstation there, then cabinetry here, 15 inches deep, 15 inches. Bed modified again, and then moving forward yet again, this whole walk-in wardrobe. From a storage perspective, we have a lot. So I'm very, very pleased that we have the workstation option. For us that will continue to bring you videos when we're sailing, having a workstation is super important. Our plan is to keep this multifunctional, but yet be able to keep this area completely clear so that when we have our patrons on board and you are all coming on board, 
We have this area clear for socializing. This area is a day bed. Down there is a workstation. The galley, independent areas. We need to have areas which are separate for doing different jobs. And then as we move into this area, now nothing's gone into place here, but this, a workshop, needs to be done. And it's not just about having a workshop, it is about being able to store my tools. And if I've got a piece of work that takes on almost four hours, I and mean, I remember fixing a water pump somewhere in the Caribbean with the worst hangover, I literally had to be carried back to the boat. I was that wrecked the night before, having to get up in the morning and fix a water pump. But being able to just leave it there in its vice, We've lived on board for seven years. I do think that we know exactly what is required oh, for liveaboard sailors. And that is why we're working with James and Mike and previously Shane to make sure that the workshop on this boat is everything I want it to be. The other thing I want to do is while I've got 10 minutes free, I want to show you some of the modifications that I talked about last week and again, how they're being implemented in Hull One. So let's step on board Hull One Supernatural and show you what I mean while the workers are on their 10 minute break. Things that are now being implemented. What is this? That is the cockpit table leg. Now it goes up and down, required. I think that's a new cockpit table, but I'm not sure. And now as we go down into the hull, I wanna run you through something else, which I think is important to notice. If you remember the test sail, the door opens that way. Now, door opens this way and the reason why is it was deemed far more accessible to do it this way this has also been changed they cut the corner of this to make it easier to make it less of an obstruction to make it less of a hazard so they've actually modified this and that will then go through all the production run so now we have a door that opens in a different way which means it's easier to get in less of a head knock there the lights are being changed and as I walk through you will see what they've done in the other hole, the minor modifications that needed to be made. Well, I put a cupboard on this now. So, it's actually really nice. These, something that became very, very apparent, having these lovely bonded handrails so that you can walk around the boat. I mean, this is, this is almost finished. It's literally almost finished. They've just got to get the headlining put back in there. This actually looks really, really good, this steamed wood, so actually, I really like this. Something else Richard made me do is climbing in and out of this bed a lot. This entire bed has been redesigned. If you think back to the, the if you think back to what you saw before, there was not a lot of space to get up. Now, much easier. Doesn't trap your hips. Design modified to take into account a slightly wider hip shape. So. It's coming to the end of our time here, my time here. Six weeks left and I'll be gone. Probably one of the best experiences of my life being here. I have a deep, deep love for this culture. It's kind of turned my life on its head uh, in so much as I now am practicing as a dentist and volunteering. I can speak Vietnamese. I'm looking to my Vietnamese practice license so I can continue volunteering. But in six weeks, uh, I'll be gone. Therese will be back on the boat and that's where we're off to sailing again. So. I want to answer a few questions that we have had um, from people. Number one, where's the boat? Where are you taking the boat? We still don't know. We hope to get the boat to the can for the can boat show. Um, but that's not our decision. That is Seawind's decision. So um, by the time this video goes out, they should have decided. But we hope to be in can. But if we're not, we'll be in Asia. That's the first thing. Second thing is uh, to the naysayers. This is boring. OK, I get that. It is kind of boring if you're not into boat building. We will be sailing very, very soon. But actually, I have learned a lot and given my time again I wouldn't do things any differently. Moving to the future um, we will be sailing and then I will come back here for a few months a year to volunteer as a dentist as you know I've been doing voluntary work so that will be continuing. Um, I want to give back to this country and I want to continue this whole journey with like learning Vietnamese. I think I've been doing this now for 15, 16 months. It is a fiendishly difficult language and the fact that I can uh, have a conversation now in Vietnamese I really want to get to like increase that. I love learning languages, so that and the culture and the cost and the, I just everything about this culture I love. As frustrating as it can be sometimes. So yeah, so May the 4th, may the force be with you. I will be back with you next week. And yeah, we'll be getting a lot of stuff done, a lot of the little finishing touches before whole one supernatural is 
finally kind of like signed off on and that should be that four weeks later Ruby Rose 2 is signed off on so enjoy that I'm gonna wait these traffic lights and not get hit by a lorry and uh, I will see you all very very soon I'm gonna go home and get an ice cold drink because it is bloody boiling here anyway there we go take care bye bye